Okay, here we go with our third interpolation question. This time we're looking at an x-score of 23. As in the past, the first thing we want to do with our x-score of 23 is find the sandwiching values, the values that are just above and just below our x-score. So 19.5 is below, 29.5 is above. The only two adjacent numbers in this column where there's one above and one below. That allows us to box up the top and bottom of both of our scales and hopefully makes it easy to set up our eye diagrams. Now that we have these numbers boxed up, we can create the eye diagrams. And these are going to help us to visualize the two intervals and the locations inside the intervals and find the missing number. In our x-score scale, we have a top of 29.5, a bottom of 19.5. 29.5 at the top, 19.5 at the bottom. And then we go over to the cumulative percentage side. We have 60% and 20%. Kind of clean numbers for you to work with. Now that we have the top and bottom of both of the scales, I think a, a good next step is to find the intermediate, I'm, I'm sorry, not intermediate, but midway values halfway in the scale. 29.5 and 19.5, the midway point is 24.5. So that we don't make that confusion that I just made of confusing intermediate and midway values. You can put a little M here. Midway, not intermediate value. I'll cover that in just a second, remind you of what, those, what, what that distinction is. The midway value on the cumulative percentage is 40%. And again, if you have any trouble thinking through what the midway point should be, take the top, add the bottom, in this case 60% and 20% is 80%, divide by 2, and you'll get 40%, which is exactly the midway point inside of this scale. So now we have a diagram set up. We have the top and bottom of both scale. We have the midway point on both, scale, both scales. We can go back and plug in our intermediate value and the intermediate value is the value that we're given that we're trying to find a cumulative percentage value for. In our case, the intermediate value is 23, not to be confused with the midway point, which is simply the midway point in the scale, not the value that we're trying to find an answer for. This value that we're trying to find an answer for is known as the intermediate value. So now that we have the intermediate value plugged into our scale, we can kind of get a sense of where we are in both of our scales. Notice that 23 distinctly below the midway point. Since we're below the midway point, we know we're in the bottom half of the scale. And because our decimal expresses how much of the scale is above the intermediate value, we anticipate getting a decimal that is larger than 0.5 because more than half of the scale is above, less than half is below. Remember the decimal expresses how much is above the scale or how much is above the intermediate value. Going over here to the second scale, thinking about our mystery final answer, we can start to put an estimate on that value. We know that we can't be above the midway point, otherwise we'd have an X score that's above 24 and a half. And we can't be below the bottom, otherwise something would be really wrong. And then from there, it might depend on how comfortable you feel with numbers, trying to get a more refined estimate. We can tell that we're not really close to the midway point. It's not like we have 24 or even 23 and a half. And we're not super close to the bottom. It's not like we have an X score of 20, 21, or even 22. And if you start thinking about where we are in the scale, we're not super close to the top, but we are a little closer to the top than we are to the bottom. So closer to 40, but not super close. There's a little bit of a distance between our midway point and our intermediate value. So now we've got a little bit of an estimate. We've got a, a visualization of the types of numbers that we're dealing with. We can go into the math and see if we can make it all make sense with the numbers. Step one looks at the distances from top to bottom. In our first scale, the distance between 29 and a half and 19 and a half is 10. In our second scale, kind of clean numbers, 60% to 20%, that's a distance of 40%. 
And if you have any trouble calculating the distances on the scales, what you can do is plug the numbers into your calculator, take the top, subtract the bottom. So on the first scale, 29.5, subtract the bottom of 19.5, and you'll come away with answer 1A, which is 10. In step two, we look at the values that will create the decimal that help us to think about where we are in the first scale and need to be in the second scale. The distance between our intermediate value and the top of the first scale is a distance of 6.5. The entire interval width is 10. Those are the two numbers that we divide to get our decimal. 6.5 distance to the top, 10 is the entire interval width. 0.65 is the decimal that expresses where we are in that first scale. And that makes sense. We know that we're below the midway point, so we know our decimal has to be greater than 0.5. Remember, the decimal expresses the portion of the scale that's above. And in this case, the majority of the scale is above this intermediate value. After we have that decimal plugged in and can make sense out of it, it fits with our overall visualization and estimate. We can use the decimal. Use the decimal to communicate with our second scale. Take the decimal, multiply the interval width of the second scale, which is 40%. And on this, you might want to have your calculator handy probably not a number that you can do in your head. So take out your calculator, take 0.65, multiply by 40%, and you should get 26. 26% is our step three answer. And as usual, we like to be able to make sense out of our step three answer. The step three number, remember, always gives you the same thing. Step three gives you the distance between the top of the second interval and your final answer. So 26% from 60, 26% down, that's going to be our final answer. To put the details on that, let's do the math in step four. 60% is the top of the interval. Our step three down to value, down to the final answer is 26%. which gives us 34% as our final answer. And then it's always possible that we've made a mistake of some sort, but at least we haven't made a huge mistake. We see that our final answer at least makes sense in the context of our general estimate. We know that our final answer should be between 40% and 20%. 34% fits. We knew that it wouldn't be real close to 40, wouldn't be real close to 20, sort of in the middle, but a little closer to 40%. If it were exactly in the midway point of this second scale, it would be 30%. And indeed, we are a little bit closer to the top than we are to the bottom. The middle point of the bottom half is 30%, and we're above that. So by all of those component parts, all those visualizations, connecting up the visuals with the math, and just a general sense of where we are in these scales, those numbers make sense. And hopefully, you can do that estimate, check those numbers, and the whole process will hopefully make even more sense as you connect those things together. So that's it. That's the last of the interpolation questions that we're going to walk you through. Hopefully, you'll all be able to answer all the questions that we have for you, make those estimates, hit the final answers, and connect them up at the end. That's it for interpolation.